After a sensational time in Kalbarri, it was time to move on. We set off on a three and a half hour drive towards Shark Bay. Our first stop was Denham. On the way, we passed some amazing scenery, some beautiful coloured waters and national parks. We spend four days in Denham and then end the week with four days in Monkey Maya. This week, we meet some of the local residents of Monkey Maya. And we get Archie out on the water in a kayak. Before testing our four wheel drive skills out in the national parks. Well, another week and this week we're at Denham. So we're going to explore Shark Bay this week. Uh, so we arrived here yesterday and we're going to just check out everything it has to offer here. So we're going to check out Steep Point, there's Shell Beach, there's an aquarium, there's the amazing National Park. There's just so much to check out in this beautiful part of the world. And we might even do a cruise, see how we go, see if we can get anything. But yeah, thanks for watching again, guys. And uh, let's go check out Shark Bay. So we've just arrived from Swarperon National Park. We've dropped Archie off with the dog sitter and we're just at the entrance and Chris is putting the tire pressure down. Morning. Yeah, so we're doing it a little bit early, but better to be safe so I just do it now. Yeah, what's your letting the tire pressure down to? Um, it'll be about 27 when it's cold, so it'll hopefully hover around 30. Okay. So maybe just a little bit over. Sounds good. And if it gets too rough, we'll pull it down a bit more. Um, Excited for the day? Yeah, yeah. Well, we weren't planning on doing steep point today, but all the roads are closed, so which is really frustrating because we made arrangements. We got Archie dog sat, uh, so yeah, a little bit annoying. It's been a lot of rain recently, but we're just keeping an eye on the roads, to see if the uh, if they open up eventually. Nice. Yeah. Okay, we're inside Francois Perron National Park now. We've let down the tires, or Chris has let down the tires, and we've just driven into the historic homestead precinct. Um, what's really good is at the entrance, even if you do have an all parks pass, it's worth stopping at the entrance because they've got maps of the national park. Like really easy to easy to read maps of the national park, so then you you can plan out your day which is really good. But first, I think we're going to quickly check out the homestead, the historic homestead here. There are some hot baths, but I think we might pop back later for those. Yeah, we'll check out the hot baths now uh, and see what that's about. But that is definitely a stop that we've got to come back later in the day. So there's a little trail around this little heritage area. So we're going to head this way. The artesian hot tub bath is this way. And then we'll make our way around the corner and there's some like sheep quarters and a blacksmith and stuff. So yeah, then there's a really cool windmill there. I love a good outback windmill. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like somebody forgot the budgie smugglers. Yeah, or well, they've gone to <laughs> the oh. oh, wow. That is Oh, that is a hot tub. Oh my god, that is really, really warm. That's lovely. It is too early to go in it no, now. Why don't we do it, it now? No one's here. Mm. Yeah, let's just do it now. Oh, this thing is so, so warm. Oh, so hard to get in. It's so bloody hot. One of the downfalls about caravanning is you don't get to have a bath. It's, you've, we've got the shower in the caravan and we have loads of showers, but you just don't get to relax in a bath. 
so it's amazing being here. Yeah, it's a good point actually, I didn't even think of that. This is, this is kind of the first bath we've had on the trip. Granted it's full water and not suitable for drinking, but it's just... Suitable for bathing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just nice. It's quite nice being able to relax and feel your muscles relax mm -hmm. and and just enjoy your bath. I'm sure I'm sure we wouldn't appreciate this half as much had we just kind of come from a hotel room and <laughs> and had a bath this morning, but right now this feels absolutely delightful. I just can't believe how naturally hot this water is and I can't tell you. Like my hands are all red already. I mean it's it's 40 degrees yeah, so I'm sure you can imagine it's what. It's 40 degrees. Yeah it's basically water. it's basically like running a hot like a bath that's as hot as just about as hot as you can bear. Yeah it's uh it's unbelievable and mm. this is just this is just located in the national park so at the heritage homestead um there's a little museum thing there uh, and just behind that on a little walking trail you get to this and it's it's an amazing little fenced off area with obviously mm. the pool, there's, there's a barbecue, not a barbecue, but there's bins and table, picnic tables over there. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, this is totally free to use as long as you pay your park pass. Yeah, so even um, if you weren't up for any of like the full on four wheel driving out to the Cape and things like that, you could still come in the national park and yeah. just have a, a nice day around even, around the place. Like even if it was pouring rain, it's one of those places like you sit in here and it'd be so nice and warm when it's cold and rainy and oh, it'd yeah. be awesome. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, I just can't believe this is just open to anyone. We've cooled down a bit now after the bath and we're back in the car. We've decided um, what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way up to Cape Peron and then we're going to gradually work our way back. That means, you know, we don't have a big drive right at the end of the day. And it also means if we do get bogged, we've got the rest of, at the far end, we've got the rest of the day to figure out what <laughs> to do. Yeah, this is pretty soft sand, but it is so much fun. It's like a, it's like a four wheel drive playground, this place. Look at this road. Yeah, the corrugations are pretty terrible in some spots though, but it's not terrible. It's amazing because it's just one really long straight road. So if you look in the distance, all you can see is a sort of a red More sand red road. road. Yeah. And then if you look behind us, oh, all you can see is a big long red road. So yeah, it just uh, it just goes for miles, but um, but it's quite fun. I think there's I think we're going to bump into quite a few people as we go around today. Um it is school holidays and we have passed a few we passed quite a few cars at the uh, tire inflating deflating station. So yeah, great that they provide that as well. Like a uh, you know an area with a tire inflator and and, and compressor and stuff. It's, it's really good. Yeah. Really yeah, cuz if you're not doing this full time and it is just a a trip up here during the school holidays, you don't necessarily have all the gear. So. Yeah, exactly. So that, that allows anyone with a four-wheel drive to come in, even if they're not too prepared. Yeah, definitely. Right, on with the 40-kilometer road of sand and corrugations. corrugations. <laughs> We made it! Yay! How'd you go driving that? That was really hard work. 
Yeah. <laughs> you can really direct the car in some of the spots that you just sort of drove forward and the sun decided where you were going. Yeah, the red sand and the, the contrast is amazing. Isn't it? Yeah. So there's actually a walk from Cape Peron round to Skipjack Point. It's one and a half kilometers, but as you can see, it's quite, it's quite sandy. So I suppose it's a, a ch fairly challenging one and a half kilometers. So you can either do it as a three kilometer there and back, or if there's more of one of you, more than one of you, then one can jump in the car and drive across and the other can walk. I had, I'm not sure we've decided what we're going to do yet. Chris is just doing a bit of droning, so I said I'd walk to Skipjack Point and he's then going to drive around and meet me there. So, whew, just come up a big sandy hill. Sand hills are always the hardest to come up. And uh, it, the walk is right along the coast, you can see there. So I'm hoping that I might be able to spot some wildlife on this walk. So yeah, it's 1.5 kilometers. And I think they say it should take about an hour. So I think they're expecting it to be a fairly slow walk. Big day today, steep point, 
we've just got to the entrance and there's a map. In fact, we just bumped into the ranger and he's really kindly given us a, a, a hard copy of the map. But we started off this morning here in Denham. Um, so the other day we did this, Francois Perron uh, National Park and went all up there. So what we're doing today, we've come all the way down here. So we are here near Hamelin Pool and we've just turned off. We're going to go, I think it stops be being sealed around there. We're going to drive all the way around this little bay here. Uh, we have to reduce our tire pressure there. And then we will head up along here up to Steep Point. And then I think we'll just do the coast road back or depending on time, we'll either come straight back or do the coast road back and, um, and then back. We've just left the bitumen and we're onto the unsealed road now to Steep Point and it's about a three hours drive of yeah. unsealed roads. So 121k amongst four unsealed uh, roads. Yeah. It's corrugations have already started. <laughs> and um, we just thought we just thought that while we're in the car for a, um, a fair bit, we'd just tell you about last night. So we didn't film too much of last night, um, but we went to, um, it was called Didgeridoo Dreaming. It was an Aboriginal cultural evening, which was, it was really good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really interesting. The Murchison River in our language is called Wadi Marlu. Marlu, where Marlu? Yeah. Behind me. Hello. Yeah. Wadi Marlu, so that's the story of the big red kangaroo. In our creation story, we say that red kangaroo got speared there. Oh. All right. When that kangaroo got speared, it traveled along that river up to a place we call Wilgi Maya. Wilgi Maya is a cave. Wilgi Maya. The kangaroo crawled in that cave and he died in the cave. The red blood from that kangaroo give us the ochre, red ochre. It was a real education on sort of the local Aboriginal culture, words. Um, we all got given names. Mm. I was Marlu, and which I was is a desert, a red desert kangaroo. Yeah, and I was Wada, which is pearl. So um, that was really good. I think there were quite a few people. Um, how many do you reckon there were there? Twenty. Uh, yeah, and um, we all sat round a campfire and learns about country and getting a bit corrugated <laughs> it is getting very corrugated um learns a bit about the uh, the night sky did a bit of aboriginal stargazing um he cooked a fish on the fire and yeah, say a few four fish, fish on the fire um and those those that ate fish went and uh, had a bit of that yeah apparently it was really good yeah but yeah, yeah, we didn't try it, but um, but yeah, apparently it was really good. Um, yeah, it was it was really good fun, and the the, uh, the gents all learned to play the didgeridoo. Where are you put your ring given these wood blocks so we got to do the rhythm and um, there was also a conch shell that anyone could try if they wanted uh, which was really good so yeah it was an enjoyable evening playing this thing <laughs> it was an enjoyable evening just getting a bit nervous here i think we might go and concentrate on the road for a bit well the ranger drove ahead of us so i'm trying to follow his line because i figure he knows what he's doing oh yeah good point yeah yeah yeah. yeah, so nice of him to give us a map. Yeah, it's really good. Nice of him to bump into him, and uh, yeah. he just said, "Yeah, it's all good to go. It's pretty easy. You shouldn't have too much trouble." <laughs> yeah. Uh, we didn't tell him we're total novices, but... <laughs> although he did see us just drive over a kangaroo. Yeah. <laughs> the kangaroo was already dead. We just didn't. It was dead. I was trying to overtake road. him, and, and yeah. he drove over it, and then I drove on it. <laughs> so, oh well. Right, okay, on to some more corrugations. Woohoo! Hi there. Hey. So the wheels, the tyres were at what, about around 38 psi? Yeah. yeah and, now you, and now you're reducing them to what, 20? Just under 20. Okay. Slightly under. So pretty low, 
because it's going to get very sandy and very rough. The board recommends 20, but then uh, someone's crossed it out and written 15, and then someone's <laughs> crossed it out and written 10. <laughs> I'm not going to 10. No way. Look, we'll go to about 18, and if it's still rocky, we'll, uh, we can put it down a little bit more. But we'll see how we go. Hopefully this is all right. And I'm using this because my other one, just so slow. So this is just so much quicker. Okay, I don't know how to deflate the tires. So Chris is going to show me how to reduce the tire pressure. All right, so we've got our nifty little tire reduction gauge here. So okay. there's three sections. This section, one, two, three. Yeah. Uh, so we want to chuck it on the little tap and tap and screw the middle section so you're just screwing the little uh, tap on okay so i can see you've already taken the yep, cap off taken the cap off okay so you screw the middle section on like that okay and then you unscrew the back section and it should eventually pop out with the pressure of the air just a little bit okay. like that oh yeah and you just give it a bit more turn and then this releases the air like that ah cool so do i need to do anything else no not really it's quite slow so sometimes okay. sometimes i fiddle with this and try and get it flowing out a bit more yeah because it takes a little while just like that cool and then how do you stop it at the end oh you just do that and then um, sorry what did you just do then so you push it open to let the air out yeah and then, but you can't read the gauge when it's open. Can't read the pressure gauge. Okay. But when you close it, that will tell you what the pressure is. Ah, so you keep opening and closing that till you get to the yeah, pretty much desired pressure. That's it. But okay. Yeah, I kind of like to fiddle with it a bit to try and let more air out. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. It's a bit funny. So once I've pushed it back in to close it, I then go in reverse. So I yeah. screw the just the end push one. that in, and if I screw it in, you'll hear it stop. I've got it open at the moment. There you go. Okay, got it. And then you unscrew it off. Okay. That's pretty much it. Okay, let's give it a go. There you go. Just keep an eye. Like, just keep a close eye on it because you don't want to let too much out. Yeah. We've just let the tire pressures down and we're about to go into the actual national park bit, which is exciting. Yeah, so it's still a long way to go though. And already the road is looking bumpy. Oh yes. most westerly point of mainland Australia. It was a bit of a trek to get here. It took four and a half, maybe five hours, but yeah. we were going pretty slow because the corrugations were atrocious. 
Yeah, the um, road's about half graded. The first bit of road they've graded and they, yeah. they haven't got round to the rest, so it's pretty bad at the moment. Yeah, it took a long time and a lot of sand dunes and just the corrugations, you know, forcing us to go 10, 15 kilometres an hour for for miles and miles and miles. Yeah, so, and we've just got the same again to do on the way back. Yeah, but who cares? We've made it. We made it, One yeah. of the four <laughs> compass points of Australia. Yeah, exactly. So I reckon we've got 20 minutes here before we've got to head back. So it's yeah. a huge trip from Denham, um, so you just got to be prepared. Uh, and if you come out here, you got to take your own food, your own fuel, water, everything. There's literally nothing out here. Yeah, we were going to bring champagne to celebrate getting to the most westerly point, but instead we've got cold pasta salad. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We know how to live it up. <laughs> so here we are, and uh, yeah, I might get a selfie and uh, make the trek back. What do you say? Yeah, sounds good. On to the northern points. Taking off again, bouncy at the back. Okay, we appear to be in a traffic jam. <laughs> yeah. So coming out of Steep Point, so there's some guys behind us. It's all single track is this bit, and there's some guys coming the other way as well. I think there's one more. Yeah, it's hard when it's a single lane, uh, hilly, sandy ascent yeah. or descent. Okay, so we're going to be taking a slight detour here. Well, a slight stop off. Chris is doing his best to be knight in shining armor. Yeah. <laughs> These guys have managed to get themselves bogged. <laughs> use the spade. So <laughs> it's amazing. Finally getting to use the max tracks. Well done, Chris. You Thanks. did a good job there. Thanks. Yeah, it's right. good to know it works. <laughs> Stuff works. Stuff works. Uh, right, let's go get Archie. Yes. Good morning from an early morning and sunny Monkey Raya. Yeah, it was a beautiful sunrise this morning that we saw from bed. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best place to see sunrise. That's isn't true. It? That's true. <laughs> Got my cup of tea. <laughs> But Archie's we're... with us. So each morning at Monkey Maya they, they do dolphin feeding at 7.45. So um, it's not always the dolphins uh, appear at 7.45. Sometimes it takes them a little longer to wake up. But every morning we've gone down as, uh, along with the rest of the caravan park to check it out. Uh, yeah, it's busy down there yeah. every morning. At 7.45 it's packed. Absolutely packed, yeah. isn't it? But, it's a good um, way to get everybody up and about. Early yeah. in the morning. And to their coffee shop next door. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to check out the dolphins again and hopefully us or one of our mates gets picked, which would be great. I got picked yesterday, which was amazing. Um, and yeah, hopefully we have a whole lot of dolphins to show you. Yeah, the weather forecast is for rain today, but yeah. it looks beautiful Yeah, at the it's moment, the best so. morning best morning we've had so far, by yeah, a so long way. Our plan was to go to the aquarium at some point, but I think we're going to, we'll watch the weather and we'll sort of time it, so maybe we can spend a little bit of time on the beach in the sun. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then maybe head to the aquarium a bit later, we'll, I think we'll just monitor the skies. That's right. Let's monitor the skies, shall we? <laughs> so let's. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. Yeah. 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 Gotten to know the individual dolphins, which is really nice. But also, we share knowledge with the local dolphins who come in with the So, between us, we have over a really great knowledge of the dolphins that we see in Monkey Mile and those that come across. We've got one more each. You ready, guys? Check the glasses off. Oh, me? Yes. Grab the fish by the tail fairly firmly. Yep. Lay it flat in the water and let go fairly quickly because she's quick. Don't give it to her, just let go. Oh, <laughs> she is. <laughs> Good luck, Archie. Good luck. 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 Good
Oh, oh, amazing. Terrible managed not to be I know. <laughs> amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Guys, those oh, sharks you can see so far at the moment are my lemon sharks. We've got four lemon sharks in here. They get their name from the yellow colour on their belly. It's not because they taste like lemon. Alright, let's not get that one confused. We do have one sand bar whaler. Her name is Sandy. She's a small shark coming by for a look at the moment. Now guys, we're gonna keep Sandy forever. Unfortunately, someone has cut half of her tail off. She's a super awkward swimmer. So we're gonna look after her for the rest of her life. So here we are, we just thought we'd take a uh, you know, cheeky little kayak trip, a kayak safari it was called, wasn't it Hannah? Yeah. Uh, and Archie's allowed on board, so he's here with us. He's freaking out a bit, as were we, <laughs> but I think he's enjoying himself so far. Uh, but yeah, there's a little turtle reef over there, so we're gonna go check that out. Uh, and if only it was summer, because when there's summer, there's a little shark sanctuary as well, but uh, fortunately we're not here in summer, so we'll just hopefully see some fish and Maybe a turtle if we're lucky, maybe a dolphin, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens, eh, Han? Yeah. Having yeah. fun? Should be good. Having fun back there? Having lots of fun. All right, let's, let's see what we can go find. Well, we had a bit of fun, heading back now. Have you had fun, Archie? Hey? Archie, speak. Have you had fun? Have you had fun, Archie? Speak. <laughs> All right, uh, let's head back, get onto this sunset cruise, and hopefully we see the big five. So that's, uh, what's the big five? Dolphins, dugongs, dugongs turtles, sharks. whales, and sharks. I'm sure we'll see all of them, right? I'll be happy if we can stick at least one off. <laughs> yeah, one would be good, and hopefully a sunrise, uh, sunrise, a sunset would be good as well because it's pretty cloudy. So, anyway, let's paddle back, Hannah. Yeah. Let's... Before we get stuck. Right, here we are at the end of another week. Yeah, it's gone quickly this week. It's been, but it's been an awesome week uh, at Shark Bay. Yeah, so we've stayed at two different places while we've been here. We did four nights at the Blue Dolphin Caravan Park in Denham, which was nice. It was yeah. just a traditional caravan park. We had a nice sized site and a lovely view of the ocean as yeah, well. Yeah, nothing spectacular, but just a nice little caravan park. Yeah. Um, you know, and the facilities were great. Uh, it's just changed over management as well, so the new management are really lovely. Yeah, the owners uh, are really friendly. Yeah, yeah willing to help out uh, with everything. So yeah, it was a good little spot and like literally a few minutes walk into town. Well, it, it is in town, but it's a few minutes walk into the shops, which is really good. Yeah, literally a stone throw from the IGA, which was handy. Yeah, yeah. And so the last four nights have been at Monkey Mile, uh, and this place is fantastic. It's got a real resort feel. It's the most resorty place we've been to so far. Um, and it's a little bit more expensive, but uh, you pay for what you get here. It's just a beautiful beach, yeah. an amazing campground. The facilities are incredible. Yeah, so I mean, we've eaten at the restaurant. Yeah, there's, um, an am there's an amazing restaurant and bar. Yeah, so there's a more formal restaurant and then there's a bar that does evening meals as well. Yeah, so it's just a fantastic place. You know, the 
camp kitchens are amazing, the toilets are amazing, and obviously you've got the dolphin experience, which uh, is really good, but it, it's often so, so busy. Uh, I was lucky enough to get picked, which was amazing, so, you know, we can tick that box, but yeah. uh, it's, uh, I don't know, for me it's a little bit overcrowded and overhyped, but it's still a really cool experience. Yeah, and then there's a shack on the beach where we could, where we uh, hide the kayak and do yeah. the kayaking, so that was good too. Yeah. So definitely family friendly place. Something, yeah. Something for everybody. And you got to visit here, it's just one of those places you got to come and check out. Uh, like it or not, it, we, we loved it. Um, but it's, yeah, it's an amazing little place. It's felt like a really varied week because we've done a bit yeah. of National Park, yeah. Steep Point, which was obviously quite- Full uh, driving. Yeah, full on four wheel driving, the yeah. hot tub. And yeah, then relaxing the aquarium. Here. Yeah, there's been, there's been, there's definitely something for everyone. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, I think this is it for this week. So mm -hmm. thanks again for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, and if you like it, uh, please subscribe and give us a comment down below. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Bye. See ya.